All right, well, it's so good to be here and cooking. This might be your first um, week of school holidays in terms of you, you might have been away or um, you've been in that holiday mode and now it's that week where things sort of start to get back, the highways get busy with everybody going back to work and so we're looking for some fun things to do. And as you know, it's all cooking is such a great activity to do in the school holidays. So today we are going to be making choc chocolatey, I think it's chocolatey choc muffins, chocolatey choc muffins. Great recipe and it's a little bit cooler today. So muffins are a great recipe to cook. Excellent. Now, today what you're doing is having a taste of what our members inside our Kids Love to Cook at Home do. And so we have lessons every week that we cook. And this is what we're going to do in the session, just so that you know what's coming up. So the first thing that we do is we talk about five safety tips before we even start cooking. Then what we're going to do is we're going to read through our ingredients, read through our equipment, and then we're going to get into the fun stuff. Beautiful. Who's ready to go? Fantastic. So you can see I've got my recipe in front of me, all ready and raring. So five safety tips before we start cooking. First one is wash your hands. So Always do that before we even start cooking, we wash our hands. Next thing we do is we keep our hands away from our nose and our mouth. Now, because you're at home, anytime you scratch your nose, it's a bit sweaty, so you might um, scratch your hair. Just quickly go over to the sink and wash your hands. You can wash your hands or rinse them quickly, eight or nine or 10 times, doesn't matter. The important thing is that you keep your hands nice and clean. So wash your hands, keep your hands away from your nose and your mouth. Third thing, cough and sneeze into your elbow, making sure that you turn away from your workbench. Fourth thing, always speak nicely about food. Now that doesn't mean that you have to like every ingredient. Um, for those of you that have been in my class before, you know that I do not like corn. And so corn isn't yuck. It's just that I personally don't love it. And uh, so we always speak nicely about food. And fifth thing, if you are particularly, if you are cooking with someone else, if you're cooking with a sibling, a cousin, a friend, always keep your, rest, your utensils pointing downwards. So that's the first safety tips. Beautiful. Now, let's grab our recipe. And if you haven't printed your recipe out, I always suggest that you have access to it. So even if you write out the ingredients, that just makes it nice and easy for you to be able to refer quickly to the ingredients as we go along. Beautiful. Now, what I'm doing here, all we're doing is checking, checking that we've got everything on our workbench and then when we actually into the cooking, we already know that we've got everything. So we don't have to run across the kitchen like a mad person. We know we just might need to move something around. That's all good. All right. So let's check. So what I'm doing here um, is just reading out the ingredient. I'm not reading out the, you, the volume or the amount. So you will need some self-raising flour. You'll need some baking soda or bicarb soda. You'll need some salt. You'll need some cocoa. Where's my cocoa powder at the back there? Cocoa powder. You'll need some milk, warm milk, preferably. If you haven't had time to warm it up, not a problem at all. You'll need some canola oil or some mild oil, some brown sugar, some vanilla, and it doesn't matter if it's extract, essence, or flavoured, all of them work the same. Some sour cream or some yogurt. You can see I've got some yogurt here because we use lots of yogurt at our house. An egg. And of course, the best part of it at all milk chocolate chips. And of course, you can have white chocolate chips or dark chocolate. Not sure too many people like dark chocolate, but you've got your chop chips right there. Excellent. Now you'll also need two mixing bowls. So you can see that I've got 
that size. I've just got two of those. You'll need measuring cups and spoons. You'll need your muffin tray with your muffin papers, of course. Or if you don't use muffin papers, you'll just need to spray your tray. You'll need two dessert spoons. You can see I've got two dessert spoons there. A spatula. I've just realized I haven't got my spatula, but that's okay. Well, I'll go and I'll grab that. A cooling rack, some oven mitts. And one thing that you will need that's not on there, so you can run and grab this now if you want to, a sifter. So if you've got like a one of those sifter things, I've just used something like this. And if you've got either a whisk or a metal fork, a whisk or a metal fork. So I'll just give you time to run, walk, walking quietly <laughs> to your cupboard or drawer and grabbing that. Fantastic. Now you'll also see that I've got all of my ingredients in one section and all of my equipment in another. So what I do, there's a, there's a term in French cooking called mise en place, and that means basically getting organized or putting into place. So I've got all of my ingredients. I don't have to go, oh, is it here? Is it there? Is it behind me? All together. And then all of my equipment, I've got that in one section there as well. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to preheat the oven to 190 degrees. So 190 degrees, fan forced. Um, so you might need to ask someone at home to help you do that. So 190 degrees, fan forced. And when we're working with the oven, when we're learning to cook, it's always important that we ask someone at home who, who is responsible to help us turn the oven on, but make sure that you've got it on the right thing. You don't want to put it on grill. I came home the other day and my husband says, oh, things aren't cooking. I don't understand. It's cooked on the top, but not underneath. And I said, honey, that's because you've got it on the grill, not on the oven. So, <laughs> it's, oh. so um, always ask for help. Now, you'll see in the recipe that we have red safety arrows. Now, we have those on every single recipe inside our Kids Love to Cook at Home membership. And you'll find that that's where, that's points in the recipe that you need to ask for help. So as you get more confident and as you're more skilled, then you'll find that you'll need to ask for help less. But that's the points where mom or dad or a caregiver needs to give you a little bit of help so that you stay safe. Great. So 190 degrees. And then we're just going to put your muffin papers into your tray. I'm going to skip over that a little bit just because I'm assuming that you have already done that. And you can sort of do that as you go along as well. So muffin papers into trays. All right. So we are at, we're skipping down to step four. Um, when we do a recipe, when we follow through a recipe, always just go step by step. Now, when you become more confident and you have cooked a recipe many, many times, then you'll say, oh, actually, I'm going to do it this way and this way. But when we're learning to cook, everything is done systematically. So that way we don't race ahead and then go, oh, I forgot to put the egg in. <laughs> I've definitely done that lots of times because I like to race ahead of things. Okay, so we're at step four and what we're going to do is grab our mixing bowl, grab your mixing bowl and your sifter. If you're using one of the push sifters, grab that and we're going to add one and three quarters of cups of self-raising flour one and three quarter cups of self-raising flour and we're going to add that to our sifter. Now if you don't have a sifter or if you don't have a sieve it's it 100% is not the end of the world so that's all good. Now I'm just pouring flour straight out of the packet and you can see it's um, just 
no frills. It doesn't need to be fancy. That's the great thing about cooking is that we don't need to use fancy ingredients. But what we do need to do is make sure we measure accurately. Oops, a daisy. So you can see that I've got, I've got my cup and I'm just making sure that it's a nice flat measure. We don't want it to go under and we don't want it to go over. And then you add that straight to your sifter. So one and three quarters. There's not a three quarters cup unless you've got like a jug like this with the measurements on the side. So I am just making sure it goes all the way to the top and then leveling it off. You might see in some recipes, spooned and leveled. You just want to make sure that you're definitely getting the right amount. So I've measured out one cup and then a half cup and a quarter cup and all together that comes to one and three quarter cups. Right. One and three quarter cups of flour. And then we're going to add the baking soda. So baking soda. And the reason we Add this is because we want our muffins to be really nice and fluffy. So what have we got? Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon. And the same thing when you're measuring spoons, always make sure that you're definitely got a nice level spoon. And the last thing is salt, half a teaspoon of salt. All right. And then we're just simply going to sift that into our bowl. I remember when I was growing up and cooking with my mum and I would I would hate the sifting bit. I like everything done really quickly. And the reason we sift is to make sure we don't have any lumps and also to add a little bit of air because remember, we're wanting fluffy muffins. And I'm going to show you a tip at the end in a couple of steps time to make sure that we don't um, get tough muffins. <laughs> we want fluffy muffins. So all of these little steps, all these little tips that I give you along the way are what we talk about inside Kids Love to Cook at Home. And uh, so every week we've got new recipes and we've got teaching videos that the kids can jump in and out of and uh, just learning so it's sort of like having grandma or someone extra um, in your home teaching you. Great. So this is what I've got. We've got one and three quarters cup of flour. One and three quarter cup of flour. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. Just give me a thumbs up when you finish that step so that I can tell who is. Yeah, great, 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 great. Excellent. Now, if you get, um, if you find yourself feeling a little bit behind, it's okay. We, there will be 
steps along the way that you'll find yourself catching up. So what I do is I, I go a little bit slower and then I repeat it. So I'll go through a step and then I talk it out loud so that you end up catching up. Great. Okay. So once you've done that, we're going to put that at the side and then we're going to grab our other bowl. Grab your other bowl. Fantastic. And I can see heaps of guys have got aprons on and I've completely forgot my apron, but I'll be nice and messy by the end. Um, great. All right. So what we're going to do is add half a cup of cocoa. Half a cup of cocoa and you'll need your sifter again because cocoa is invariably um, lumpy. So I pulled out from my pack before when I did um, my other muffins, my testing muffins. Um, and I pulled out a couple of really big lumps. Great. All right. So again, half a cup of cocoa powder. And I'm spooning that in. Excellent. And I'm sifting that. And you can see that I'm using my spoon to push any big lumps. You might not have any lumps, which is great. Excellent. Now, while you're sifting, I'm just going to grab my other muffins out of the oven. There's my muffins I cooked before. I did forget them so that they're a little, little overdone, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. How are we traveling with our whisking? I can see yeah, it. Cruz, you're doing well there. Fantastic. Excellent. All right. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add three quarters of a cup of warm milk now the reason we add warm milk and just cold milk is because um the warm milk helps um integrate i suppose the word or mix together um into the cocoa a little easier rather than rather than forming lumps so three quarters of a cup of warm or even room temperature milk is perfect And then grab your whisk. And so when we whisk, I'm not going like this underneath. Put your hand over the top, right? Hanging onto the bowl with your other hand and whisking. A little bit of an art to whisking. And the reason we use a whisk is that it just incorporates a little bit more air and um, it's, it will sm smooth you, smooth, is that a word? Smooth is a word. Um, it will make your mixture nice and smooth. All right. You don't have to go crazy just until it's mixed together. Fantastic. Excellent.
All right, Gabby doing well there. Excellent. Elsie, fantastic. Felix, how are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Great. Love it. Well done. All right. All right. Great job. I'll just give you 30 more seconds of whisking your mixture and then we'll start on the next thing. All right, fantastic, great. Well done, Aaliyah, excellent. All right, so the next thing that we're going to add to our mixture here is we're going to add our sugar. So uh, are we doing that in order? Let's just make sure. Let me go to my mixture. All right, so the sugar, we're adding one cup of brown sugar one cup of brown sugar now i am reusing all of my me measuring cups because remember it's all going in together anyway so now with brown sugar it's a little bit different than white sugar because white sugar is what we call granulated and it's a little bit more sticky so with brown sugar we always have to press it down and that's called firmly packed so we're going to firmly pack and that makes sure that we get the accurate measure. So with our flour, we don't firmly pack it, but with our brown sugar, we totally do. So that might be a little confusing at first. All right, just press it down till you've definitely got the right amount. And you can see I make a mess. Mess is not a problem. It's what you do afterwards. All right. Perfect. So one cup of brown sugar. And then we're going to add half a cup of canola oil. half a cup of canola oil. So you can see that I've got my measuring cup on the workbench so that I'm not trying to hold it up in the air and trying to pour and hold it and because that's just got danger written all over it. But what we're doing, <laughs> I'm holding it, making sure that it's definitely up to the top. Then I'm going to pour that in. Perfect. So we've got our one cup of brown sugar and then we've got half a cup of canola oil. Really? And the next thing is that we're going to do the egg. I'll just see how everyone's traveling. Great. Excellent. Love it. I love all these thumbs up. That helps me know when to move forward. So, because I don't want to race forward when you guys are still back here. Otherwise, it gets a bit frantic. 